Erica, and I'm currently a third year medical student at the University of Nevada, Reno School of Medicine. In this video, I'll be talking a little bit about how to tackle the first two years of medical school. These first two years are called the didactic years. And in these years, you're basically in the classroom learning just like you were in college from lectures. You'll be covering mostly the basic foundations of medicine. Years three and four, it's more clinical, so you're on rotations and actually in the hospital taking care of real patients. I'm going to focus more on how to tackle the classroom setting. So before I start, I wanted to say that I think the main premise of this video is going to be all about awareness. In particular, self-awareness. I realized that in the past couple years, being your best self is really about being your most aware self. Being aware of how you feel, how you respond to certain situations, whether you want to make improvements at work, at school, even in relationships or at the gym. I think that the main underlying important factor is how aware you are of yourself. While I think that most of these tips can actually apply to any kind of student, whether you're in college or in another type of graduate school, I really wanted to make these tips focused on how individuals who are starting med school can succeed in the classroom. The main thing you should know going into med school is that there isn't a huge increase in the difficulty of the information that you'll be seeing. Um, you'll actually be seeing a lot of repeat from what you saw in undergrad. The difference really is the volume. You're going to get probably wildly overwhelmed your first week or so of med school because you're going to have tons of material introduced to you and it's going to seem like a lot and you can't handle it. And I think it's just important to remember that nobody knows everything. There's no way to know every single detail of every little disease or every little treatment. So just remember that even though there's a lot of material, no one expects you to know every single little thing and that all you can do is your best and that's good enough for you. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the study tips. Tip number one, know the syllabus and know the schedule. So when you first start a new block or a new semester, however it works at your med school, you're given a syllabus and it will outline what the grade breakdown is. Take a good look at that. So at my school, it was mostly just exam grades. For some blocks, we had only just one exam and that was going to be your grade for that block. Make sure you look at that grid breakdown because that's what's going to determine how you perform. Obviously, you want to see when those exams occur. So make sure you take note of what day your exam is and write that down in whatever kind of schedule you use to manage your time. So I like to block off that weekend before as best as I can. Sometimes things can move so that way I don't have to feel any pressure of not having enough time to get through material. The other thing I like to do with the schedule is to see when required classes are. And that is going to play a big role into what I'm about to talk about. So tip number two is decide whether you want to attend class or not. So I think it's in college when you first start to play around with skipping class and seeing if you can get away with that. But in med school, I think that escalates even more so. And I'm not saying like skip class because you don't want to learn or something like that, but I'm just saying skip class if you know that's the way you learn best. So I actually recommend that you go to class for at least a few weeks just to get a feel for what you can get out of lecture. And then after you've done that for a little bit, maybe play around with skipping a lecture and seeing if that suits your study needs. You're not gonna know right away if you are meant to go to lecture or you're not meant to go to lecture. Or at least I didn't know right away. Actually, when I first started med school, I went to every single class for about three to four months. And then after that, I realized that I was not really the type of student that learns well in lecture. I could study more efficiently and effectively if I didn't go to class and studied a different way, which I'll talk about in a little bit. It's nothing against the school or the lectures. I'm sure they were amazing lectures and they really got the point across to some students. But for me, I just don't actively learn in lecture. Trust me, I tried. I sat in the front row. I would preview the lectures. And none of that really seemed to be a benefit to me. And that works for so many people. But I just have to be aware of myself and what works for me. That being said, professionalism is a huge deal once you get to graduate education. So it's really important that if there are required classes, you go to those classes in your own time. Even though I wasn't going to the lectures, I still definitely went through the lectures material. So usually they had a PowerPoint and I would always go through those and make sure that I understood everything in those PowerPoints. 
and if there was ever something in the PowerPoint that didn't make sense to me, I would just do a quick Google search, honestly, and um, what I found most useful was actually, I would start off at like the Wikipedia page, just to get a big picture idea of what the disease process was, or what the medication did, or whatever, just like a big picture, so I kind of have a feel for what's going on. And then I usually had to use like primary sources or other more scientific sources to really understand what was going on from there. So you might be wondering if I didn't go to any lectures besides the required ones because professionalism, then what was I actually spending my time doing? That brings me to tip number three, and that is make a schedule. So before I talk a little bit more about schedules, I just wanted to say that everyone has different standards for how they want to perform. Everyone has different baselines and educational backgrounds. So it's important that you set your standards. You set the expectations that you have for yourself based on what knowledge you previously had, how hard you want to work, how much time you want to put in. You set those standards when you start school and you respect that those are the standards that you set. Another thing that is so important to talk about is that everyone studies at different paces. I always felt like I had to study 20 times harder and for 20 times the amount of time that other students had to study to do just as well. And while I know that some of that was just a lie I created in my head because I really struggled with the imposter syndrome, I know that there is actually some truth to that. Like, I do need a little bit more time to study and to retain things than other people might, and that's totally okay because I set my standards and I set the expectations for myself and how hard and how long I wanted to work to get to those standards. And so knowing myself, knowing that I needed more time and more repetition, I respected that and I respected that I wanted to do really well. So while I might have been studying like five times longer and harder than other people, I knew that's what I wanted. Some people didn't study for the exams until like one or two weeks before exam time, but that made me feel really uncomfortable. So I started studying like the first day of a new block and um, I would study pretty much the same amount whether it was the beginning of a block or the end of the block. I almost would say that I studied less at the end of the block because since I studied so early, I knew the material well. So at the end, I was pretty comfortable with the material already. So going back to schedules, the way I look at it, there's two different ways you can really do schedule. You can either do like a time-based schedule or you can do like a to-do list type schedule. And I personally was more of a to-do list kind of person. Every Sunday before the week would start, I would look at the coming week's schedule and I would look at how many lectures there were, how many hours each lecture was, and I would also look at the PowerPoints because for the most part, the PowerPoints were uploaded early. I would take into consideration how difficult it was and how much material there was when I was creating my schedule for the week. But from there, I would divide the amount of material um, between every day of the week. That would give me just like how an average number of lectures I'd have to get through per day in order to stay on top of it. Take into consideration how difficult the material was, like if I've seen something before, I knew I wouldn't need as much time, or if there was a lecture that was like 200 slides versus one that was like 30, obviously I would take that into account and try to make um, each day be as equal as possible in the amount of material I'd have to get to. And then obviously I'd have to take into account if we had required things. So if I had a required class one day that took five hours, I wouldn't schedule myself to get through more than like one or two lectures for that day because I didn't want to make expectations that I couldn't fulfill. And I would try to schedule myself to finish by Friday at 6 p.m. And the reason I did that was because Friday at 6 p.m. after that I just wanted to give myself a good break so I don't burn out. So 6 o'clock on Friday, for the most part, I'd be done studying. And obviously I wanted to give myself some flexibility because sometimes things come up and you don't get through the lectures. So then I'd give myself like a hard deadline of Saturday by noon. So that meant that if I was done by the time I planned on Friday at 6, then I'd have from Friday at 6 all the way till Saturday at noon to just relax and take a break. But if something did come up and I wasn't able to finish getting through the week's material by Friday at 6, then I would also still have half a day to catch up Saturday morning. I'd spend the rest of the afternoon going through the previous week's material again. So if I found something particularly difficult, and I would do that like, all night Saturday until I felt like I wanted another break. So that, honestly, like that would usually be until like seven or eight at night. And then I think something really important is the idea of spaced repetition. So that's if you go over the same material at spaced increments, so maybe you'll wait like a whole week before you look at something again, then you remember it better later. So Sundays, I would actually spend going through previous week's 
information. So not the one that I had just completed, but like weeks one and two if I was on week three. And then also on Sundays, I would look at the week ahead, like I said before, make the plan and the schedule for that Monday through Friday, and then also I would always meal prep because I feel like that saved me a lot of time. So that was like the to-do list kind of way of scheduling, and then there's also a timing kind of scheduling. So I know a lot of people who do those um, timers where you are productive for a certain amount of time and then you set breaks for yourself. So like one example is if you work really hard and study really focused for 30 minutes straight and then you give yourself like a five minute break. Um, and that works super well for some people. If that works for you and if you've tried it before, if you wanna try it, like do it. It's super helpful for a lot of people. But for me personally, I have tried it and I just found that if I hit that 30 minute mark and I was in a zone, I really didn't want that distraction to take me out of my flow if I was enjoying what I was learning and if I was like really focused. I just didn't really like that interruption. Or on the other side, if I was feeling really burnt out and it had only been 20 minutes but I just felt miserable and in pain and I just needed a minute to like close my eyes, then I didn't want to feel guilty for stopping too early. So I just felt that for me personally, the timer wasn't really my thing. So tip number four is if I wasn't going to lecture, what exactly was I doing? So I am a morning person. I love getting up early. I love sleeping early. I'm a total grandmother in that way. And so I usually would wake up by like 5 or 5.30. And the first thing I like to do is work out. Um, I've noticed that for me, I have to get to the gym the first thing or I won't make it. And also it just does a really good job of waking me up in the morning so I can actually focus throughout the day. So first thing I do is get to the gym by 6 and I usually am there from like 6 to 7 or 7.30 and from there I would usually shower at school um, so that way if I had class or if I wanted to study on campus um, I didn't have to go home and I'd be ready and situated sitting at my study spot wherever that was by 8.30. I would look at the schedule that I had set for myself, the Monday through Friday, what lectures do I want to get done and I would start working on that just chipping away from 8.30 until lunch. So I'd have lunch around noon and I'd take an hour for lunch and I'd just take a complete break. I wasn't studying, I was relaxing, talking to my friends if I was on campus. And then from one until dinner time, which I usually have done around five, I would just keep studying, chipping away at my lectures, trying to get done what my to-do list had on it. And then I'd take another hour break for dinner from like five to six. And then after that, if I was done studying, like if I had finished through my to-do list, I would call it a day, and if I wasn't, I kept working, but I usually called it by, I want to say, like 9 o'clock at the latest. By 9 o'clock, I was done, and I made it a point to try to get to bed by 10 or 10.30 so I could get a decent amount of sleep. And honestly, it seems like a lot of hours of studying, and it was, and I honestly don't know how much other med students study because I'm so focused on what my expectations and my standards and my abilities are that I don't care how many hours other people study. If I'm studying like 20 times more hours than somebody else, I don't care because we have different expectations, different standards, and different methods of study. Just realize that you have to do what's best for yourself and you can't compare yourself to other people. First year, I was mostly just focused on like learning what study techniques work best for me, like figuring out what resources I thought were gonna be good for the future when I was studying for boards, trying to decide if I was the kind of person who would go to lecture or who would skip lecture and study independently, trying to figure out if you like learning from videos or if you like to read. So honestly, at the end of the day, use year one to play around and to figure out what works best for you and to really nail down the foundations. I do wish I got a little bit more familiar with first aid during my first year. First aid is a step resource, but they have some good charts and some good review on just like the basic fundamentals. And then they had all the normal physiology and that correlated really well to some of the lecture material. So I wish I had looked at that stuff, but as far as looking at anything in first aid that's not relevant to class like don't even bother like you'll have tons of time i know it doesn't seem like it and it does go by really fast but from my experience i don't think it's necessary to really stress about step one the first year so second year you're really starting to think about what is step how am i going to prepare for it what resources am i using so by the time i started my second year i had already kind of figured out what resources that i was going to use and so I kind of use those review resources 
throughout the year. And I changed my schedule approach a little bit for second year. I still kind of did that thing where I found the averages of my lectures and tried to split that up for the week. But instead of just like looking at the lecture slides and seeing how dense those were, I would look at the actual topics. So for instance, one week you were going over like bacteria and viruses and antibiotics and antivirals. So then I would go to Sketchy Med and I would see how many videos they had for those topics and then I would divide those equally throughout the week. So I was still getting through the same material in that week, but I was using other resources than just the lecturer's PowerPoints. I would still go through the lecturer's PowerPoints, but those would be more supplementary to what my focus was on when I was starting to study the boards. First Aid, Sketchy Med, Pathoma, those are the main resources that I was using. So I would see what overlaps there were, and if there were overlaps, I would go through those resources first. I'm gonna make another video about how I studied for step one, so I won't go into too much detail, but just know that there was a difference how I approached in my first and second year. And again, I'll go into all the resources that I used for my questions and for a step review in a different video. So I hope you enjoyed this video about how to tackle the didactic years. If you haven't already, please give this video a like if it helped you and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of how I tackle medical school and how I keep balance in my life.